You know, this time of the year for the rest of the world, they call it the most wonderful time of the year. Everyone puts up their decorations, they play their songs, they buy their gifts, and they pretend to care about each other for the brief moments that they have unless you're buying something that they want. Then they'll forget about all that and fight you. When I was living in the deception, it was the same for me though as well. It was the most wonderful time of the year. But when Father woke me up from my slumber and showed me the truth of this world and the false worship I was giving, this time of the year turned from the most wonderful to the worst time of the year for me. For me early on, it was always having to explain to my family and friends why I don't celebrate this pagan holiday. Every time I left the house, I would have to be bombarded with the symbolism, the idols, the music. Some of it would often catch me off guard. I would have to constantly fight off that Christmas spirit. That Christmas spirit that they try to market to us as something great and benevolent, but it's actually quite evil and sinister. I mean, I just dreaded this time of the year. And there wasn't a worse time of the year for me until here in the States, they made the month of June Pride Month. Of course, during the time of the summer solstice, so every six months we are bombarded with extremely rebellious behavior. But though the month of June is completely intolerable, and as a word of advice, just stay out of New York during this month. But during the month of December, it really was the hardest time of the year. But a few years back, after I matured more in my understanding, Father took the challenge away from me and provided me with a better perspective and it helped me tremendously in dealing with the times of the winter solstice and the false worship of the reborn sun god. Being that this video this week falls on the day right before the world gathers to worship the sun, I would like to re-clarify certain things for people that may still be on the fence. And I would also like to help those in the true faith of our Messiah that refuse to follow the ways and traditions of this world. We must use this time properly. This is a time for growth and the gaining of strength, and I want you to use it as such. This is the time for those of us who live through our faith to exercise our strength, not for us to live in dread and disgust. Those that falsely celebrate Christmas, even though they know that Yeshua wasn't truly born on this day, they like to use the excuse that at least the world gets to know about Jesus. Well, in our case, we actually are in the position to really show the world who Yeshua is. So to all the believers in the world, gather your strength, walk in the spirit, and proclaim the truth, the way, and the life. We are to be holy, set apart once, and there is no better time than now to show this. Let's begin. Okay, so first off, I will not go back into proving that Christmas is a pagan holiday. Years back, I made a video on this, and the information still stands, so there is no reason for me to update it. If people want to deny that Christmas is pagan, then that really is on them at this point. In my last video last week, I showed how the Christian rapper Flame and The Truth made some horrible statements in regards to Christmas. Mm -hmm. for example, say for example, we celebrate Christmas, and uh, mm -hmm. if, if, there's, if there's accurate research showing that that was a pagan holiday, right? Let's just go with that. And then Christians mm -hmm. sort of usurp it or lay hold of it and then say, we're going to celebrate the son of God on this day. That's already well marketed um, and, and recognized. We're going to take this opportunity to highlight Jesus's birth. It's sort of genius. It's sort of um, something pure in it that that they wanted to signal the reality of the son of God in a culture that wasn't thinking about him, that didn't value him when he was brought up. And they wanted to, to latch on to something like that. We do this all the time, bro. I think it's important to remember that God is not brittle. Hmm. I don't, and with that said, I don't think he minds, which historically I think we find is that he doesn't mind actually taking some of what is, to your point, common, in the culture, even if it's associated with something pagan mm -hmm. and kind of using it for, to accomplish his greater good or his greater goals. Yeah. Um, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Those views are absolutely horrible. And they said a lot more, but it did help drive home a point father was trying to make with me. 
Yes, Christmas is pagan, and it is the worship of the reborn sun god. And believers in Yeshua, the Messiah, should not ever celebrate this. But in displaying our faith, this is not the biggest point to explain. Christmas, being a pagan holiday, is a good intro to the topic, obviously. But as believers who hold on to the faith, instead of showing the devil in things, we should take a better approach and reintroduce people to our Father and His ways. In dealing with Christmas, we should show more about what He says and what He desires in our worship of Him, instead of arguing about it being pagan. People can deny all day long about whether Christmas is pagan or not, which really is a dumb argument. I mean, were people worshiping the reborn sun god before Messiah walked this earth during this time? Absolutely. So we know for certain it is not about him. But in the end, for many, showing the devil does not lead to more conviction than showing the truth of Father's word. Because what I've seen is that a pagan holiday point can be just a smokescreen to them. People will argue about history all day long. But you know what they can't deny? Yeah, it's what his word says. They can't deny this. People keep saying, show me one scripture where celebrating Christmas is wrong. And I'm like, why would the Bible talk about Christmas when they were not celebrating it at that time? This is a dumb argument and a stupid point. But again, it's just a smokescreen. People will want to talk about that so they can ignore the bigger points. What we need to do during this time is discuss Father and what he says, period, about the traditions of men and following the ways of this world. You see, the argument that they want to talk about is paganism. That video that I showed with the truth in flame, or many other people that want to discuss about Christmas not being a pagan holiday, that's all they want to talk about, whether it's pagan or not, and whether you can twist it or not. And as long as they're able to keep the conversation there, the devil will keep them from hearing about what Father truly says about worshiping him in vain. So in gathering your strength and dealing with the false celebration of this Christmas pagan festival, do not forget to add the most important point to the discussion, what Father says about the traditions of men. You see, if we just take it there, the whole discussion gets quickly shut down. Here's an example of a conversation. Hey, Merry Christmas, Ron. Oh, I don't celebrate it. Oh, why? Because it's pagan, right? Yeah, I heard that before. But it's just not true. Either way, this is about Jesus, and we're giving him all the glory, so it can't be wrong. Well, yes, I don't celebrate it because it's pagan. That's a big point. But even more so, I don't celebrate it because in my worship of him, I want to give him all the glory. I don't like doing things that he tells us not to do. What? Give me one scripture that tells you not to celebrate Christmas. Well, for me personally, I really hate that point. Because believers then didn't celebrate Christmas, so this wasn't a point. But let me flip it back to you. Please give me one scripture that tells you to celebrate Christmas. Oh, come on, man. What? Okay, here's a different question. Why do you celebrate it on this day? Where in scripture does it say that he was born on December 25th? You know the Bible doesn't tell when he was born. This is the day we chose to recognize. Okay, let me make sure I understand. When you said we chose to recognize, you mean man chose, not God, right? Yeah, people who love Jesus chose this day a long time ago. Yeah, okay, I got you. So it's a tradition of man. Yes, we created it to give him glory. Okay, but don't you think it gives him more glory to follow his word? What you mean, man? We just went over that there is no scripture telling us not to celebrate Christmas. So how are those that are celebrating Christmas not following his word? Because his word says many times not to follow traditions of men, which you just said Christmas was. Like Colossians chapter 2 verse 8. Let's read it. Beware, lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Messiah. Or, Yeshua said this in Mark chapter 7, verse 13, making the word of Elohim of no effect 
through your tradition which you have handed down and many such things you do. Write those scriptures down and read them on your own. He does not like traditions of men. He doesn't like us worshiping him in ways and traditions that we have created. I mean, if you don't believe that, just go back to the Old Testament when he was dealing with Israel, when they were coming into their promised land, taking it away from the other pagan tribes. Deuteronomy chapter 12, verses 29 through 32. It says, When Yahuwah, your Elohim, cuts off from before you the nations which you go to dispossess, and you displace them and dwell in their land, take heed to yourself that you are not ensnared to follow them after they are destroyed from before you, and that you do not inquire after their gods, saying, How did the nations serve their gods? I also will do likewise. You shall not worship Yahuwah your Elohim in that way. For every abomination to Yahuwah which he hates, they have done to their gods. For they burn even their sons and daughters in the fire to their gods. Whatever I command you, be careful to observe it. You shall not add to it, nor take away from it. I mean, I think that's pretty clear. You can argue all day about Christmas being pagan, which it clearly is. But he told us very clearly not to follow traditions of men. He told us not to serve him the way the other nations serve their gods. And he said, do not add or take away from it. I just read these three scriptures. So in giving him all the glory, as you said, I choose to follow what he says. But I'm not here to argue with you, bro. If you want to talk about it, let me know. Just please don't feel you are worshiping Yeshua while you ignore what he says. That's very dangerous. Okay, bro. Thanks. I appreciate the perspective. I pray about it. Okay. Now, I'd be straight lying if I told you all my conversations were that easy and flowed like that. That is not my reality. I promise. I'm just trying to emphasize what we should be speaking to. And that is about not following the world, but more about following him. That we should beware of traditions of men and not worshiping him as other nations worship their gods. In that clip where Fling said, it's actually genius and pure. So say, mm -hmm. for, exa say for example, we celebrate Christmas and uh, mm -hmm. if, 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 there's, if there's accurate research showing that that was a pagan holiday, right? Let's just go with that. And then Christians mm -hmm. sort of usurp it or lay hold of it and then say, we're gonna celebrate the son of God on this day that's already well marketed um, and, and recognized. We're going to take this opportunity to highlight Jesus's birth. It's sort of genius. It's sort of um, something pure in it that, that they wanted to signal the reality of the Son of God in a culture that wasn't thinking about him, that didn't value him when he was brought up, and they wanted to, to latch on to something like that. We do this all the time. He obviously did not read these scriptures that showed that this is exactly what he did not want people to do, not to worship him the way other people were worshiping their gods. It can't be pure if he hates it. My advice to you in dealing with those that argue about paganism because they really don't understand it, at this point, leave that argument alone and bring it to the word about traditions of men. I'm not saying that this will change all, because not everyone truly has a desire to serve him with their hearts as well as their mouth. But at least it's a different approach rather than just discussing about the devil. Now these scriptures seem pretty clear and straightforward, but there are many that like to hold a couple of verses and use them out of context and believe they are justified through them. So I do need to cover them. The main one which I will speak on is very irritating when I hear it come up. It's Colossians chapter two, verse 16. This is found eight verses after Colossians 2, verse 8, which I read earlier. Verse 16 says, So let no one judge you in food or in drink, or regarding a festival or a new moon or Sabbath. When this scripture is used in justification of Christmas, it can be quite irritating because it is an example of isolating scriptures and not placing it into full context. Like I said, Eight verses before this one, the Apostle Paul said, 
Beware, lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit, according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Messiah. So when people use this scripture, are they saying that the Apostle Paul was contradicting himself in the same chapter? I mean, that's ridiculous. He warns you not to be cheated through philosophy, deceit, according to the tradition of men and the basic principles of this world. So if what you are practicing is a tradition of men, you cannot apply verse 16 and justify it. It makes no sense. But let's take that point out of the way. People that use this scripture actually use this to justify their rebellion against the word. And you need to make sure you don't follow their bad example. Most people that use this scripture are just using it because someone else gave it to them. There's not much understanding around it. If there was, they wouldn't be using it in the first place. I've seen this scripture even used for Halloween. It's ridiculous. People love using these things to justify their pagan festivals. But let's leave these American pagan festivals out of it that people are just accustomed to celebrate. Anytime anyone wants to use that verse, give it right back to them. Ask them. Now, what if I took the date of the summer solstice, June 21st, the time when pagans and Wiccans worship the sun, and I said, this is the day we are all going to celebrate the day Yeshua walked on water. Is this okay to do? And does that scripture mean that you can't judge me if I do it? Absolutely not. And any person who believes that you can just worship Yah any way that you choose is not worshiping him. But you are in fact worshiping Satan. Satan tells you you can do what you want, worship him how you want, and it will be accepted. With Satan, there is no right or wrong. But our Father in Heaven has his own ways, his own commands, his own festivals, his Sabbaths. And being a follower of him requires us to do what he says and not just live how we want to live. If you have been practicing a belief that allows you to worship God the way you think he will like, then you are not worshiping Yahuwah, the God of the Bible. But again, you are in worship of our adversary Satan who has an influence on you that you need to handle. But listen, verse 16 of Colossians is completely taken out of context, only for purposes of rebellion. Colossians chapter 2 was a chapter to support those dealing with people in the church who were promoting false doctrines, for those that were dealing with the lukewarm church of Laodicea. Verse 1 of chapter 2 says, For I want you to know what a great conflict I have for you, and those in Laodicea, and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh. If you remember in Revelation chapter 3, the lukewarm church that gets vomited out of Messiah's mouth is the church of Laodicea. The Kodeshim, followers of the way, both Jew and Gentiles, as chapter 1 verses 26 and 27 show, they were keeping Old Testament laws and customs, and they were living joyously through them. Now, there were people criticizing these members of the assembly, judging for their joyous eating and drinking, which is a part of the observance of Yah's commanded assembly. Paul didn't discourage what they were doing. No, he told them not to allow others to condemn their practices. This is what this chapter and that verse that people keep using is speaking of. Paul is trying to help them deal with the challenges of the false doctrines being spread there. That's why he was warning about traditions of men and empty deceit. The whole chapter needs to be read in context and not by isolating one scripture to make it sound as you want. Verse 16, speaking of food or drink or festival or new moons or Sabbaths, is not about celebrating new festivals created by men like he rebuked in verse 8, but it was about the church still abiding in Yah's way found in the Old Testament not new pagan festivals that had nothing to do with truth. In this scripture, Paul was telling the members who were feasting according to Yah's festivals and Sabbath laws to carry on as they had been doing. This was not about rebellion to Yahuwah's laws, but it was in support of those who were still keeping them. Read this chapter again, matter of fact, this whole book of Colossians, but specifically chapter 2, and you will gain clarity.
Don't ever listen to anyone who uses this scripture in justification of rebellion, saying that you can just do things your way and not be judged for it. Anyone who uses this scripture to justify Christmas and Easter and any other false pagan man-made traditions that the modern day church accepts, anyone who uses the scripture to do that is in fact identifying themselves as exactly what Paul was speaking against in that same scripture that they are using to justify Christmas. It's completely hypocritical. In that scripture they keep using, he was against them, not for them. Those that use this scripture are identifying themselves as the lukewarm church, and it is something that they may want to identify with before their time is up. Holding this view is something that should be repented from, not spoken of in confidence. You are isolating scripture and using it completely out of context. You are what Paul was warning against. He did not write that verse to defend you, but to rebuke you. Do not isolate scripture. That is a highly dangerous activity that leads to pure rebellion. We cannot worship Yah the way that we choose. We must worship him in the way he desires. If you want to celebrate him, he has many feasts that are wonderful that you can keep, that you can celebrate with your family. Today, the modern day church has been taught to do away with what is found in the word and practice what has been created by man. When you see how much this has been done, you can see how we have gotten to these end times. The church follows man and rebukes those that want to follow the word. It's completely upside down and backwards. And if you're a believer, do not follow these type of people. That is a very false way that will lead to complete separation from Yah. And if you struggle with any of this, please take it to him in prayer and go to his word rather than going to man that justifies rebellion. Now, Besides those uncomfortable discussions about why you don't celebrate, now you still have to live in this world. And like I explained earlier, during this time, it can be quite difficult. But you know what? Dealing with these times does not have to feel like a burden or something regretful. It's time to have the right perspective. As believers, we are to live holy, set apart lives. We are Kodashims, set apart ones. We must be set apart from this world not following its ways and aligned to its patterns. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of Elohim. That's Romans chapter 12, verse two. We are seeing that as the days continue, Christmas is far from the only thing we will be against and have to separate from. When we are doing this separation, it requires strength and conviction it requires the ability to stand firm against evil, even when everyone else around you says it's not evil or they hate you for your stance. It requires you to be willing to be hated. This is what standing in our faith and being set apart is. When you look at this time, don't look at it as a burden, but more like set apart training. I know for certain that dealing with the rejection of Christmas personally built my family up and knowing how to reject the ways and patterns of this world. This is the time where the majority, even those that don't even believe personally in Jesus, they all still celebrate Christmas. I mean, atheists, Rev 2 nines, pagans, witches, even some Muslims. So when you say that you believe in Messiah, but do not participate, people want to look at you as weird or cultish or extra or other false thoughts. Consider this time a set apart training. You are coming out of the ways of this world and you are building up your strength in Messiah to do so. You are building up your dependence on the Holy Spirit to sustain you and give you the peace and love you need to be able to deal with those that the enemy sends your way. During this time of year, when the demonic spiritual energy is so strong, it will help build you up for the battles you will face in other areas of your life as you continue to grow and become set apart. If you take this time to learn how to reject the ways of this world and deal with the persecution and conflicts that that brings you while still staying firm in your faith and being a representative of Father's kingdom, this will help you in fighting against evil and standing up against what is wrong. It will help you in your walk if you use it as an opportunity and not as a burden. Now, does it make it easier? Maybe, or maybe not. 
Perspective is always important. But you are a believer, worshiping Father in spirit and in truth in a world that wants to try to serve him in lies and rebellion. This will always bring conflict. And as you train yourself up in how to deal with it righteously, it will prepare you for more battles that you will face as we move closer to our Father's day. Learn to be able to tell people you are different and why. Learn how to ignore the criticism or deal with it when it comes. Learn how to reject invitations to things you know you shouldn't go to or people you shouldn't be around. Learn how to live in this world run by Satan and deal with his constant provocations as he has placed them all over. Learn how not to respond to people when they say, Merry Christmas. I mean, that was always a big problem for me in the beginning. I mean, what do you say to people when they say, Merry Christmas? Do you say it back to them so you're not being rude? Do you tell them, well, I don't celebrate Christmas because it's a pagan holiday. That is absolutely tiring. What do you do? The answer is, you yield to the Holy Spirit. This is a time where if you let him guide you, he will tell you who needs a response and what type. He will tell you if there is no reason to respond altogether. That is why it's training. Many times I've been led to just ignore, like I didn't hear it. But I've never been led to say Merry Christmas back because I don't mean it. I don't even like saying thank you when I hear it. I do not worship Satan and I will not remotely try to appear so just to keep other people comfortable in their rebellion against our creator. I won't do it. In living during these times, you don't need to go to Christmas parties or family dinners. Just because your family is getting together on this day doesn't mean you have to participate. This is how we display being set apart. This is what being set apart is. Setting yourself apart from the ways of the world. Don't be weird about it, but be firm in your convictions. You don't have to do things to make others feel better. Most of these people won't leave you alone because you don't celebrate it. They don't leave it alone so things won't be uncomfortable. No, many people will force themselves on you with it because they want to force you into compliance with them while they want you to respect their desire for their false worship. You do not need to bend to them in order not to be looked at as rude or mean. Being set apart means exactly that. Set yourself apart from it all. For those of you in families that celebrate Christmas, you live in their homes and there's nothing you can do about it, the advice is simple. Don't give your heart to this day. If they force it on you, be there, but don't bring your heart into the celebration. I know it's difficult, but you are responsible for yourself and your own personal relationship with Yah. We all come to him personally and stand before him personally. So though you are in a challenging position, it does not give you the excuse to fold. Stand firm in your convictions and give it to him to guide you through this day. How we live during this time is simple. We act like the day doesn't even exist. I don't text people back that tell me Merry Christmas and they pretty much have stopped reaching out to me after a while. I treat it like every other day of my life. This year, it falls on the Sabbath, so we will rest like we do every Sabbath. We will talk about him, but I will not give over any energy to the satanic holiday. Make sure you do not contribute any energy to this Christmas spirit. Live a set-apart life from it. Use this time, again, as training so you continue to gather strength as we move further away from the ways of this world, living truly set-apart lives. We are believers. So we will not conform to the ways of this world. We will live the way our Messiah has said, and we will follow him as he is the word. We will obey his voice and follow his commands. We will not live in rebellion to his word and then follow man's traditions of rebellion leading to hell. Stand strong in your faith. Persevere through these challenges. Resist the enemy and overcome. For the day of our redemption is near. Stay strong and stay blessed. Okay, thanks again for watching. If this has blessed you, please don't forget to like this and share it with others. I hope this helps you deal with this day. If you have not done so already, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Elohim willing, I upload every Friday. Don't forget to follow this ministry on Facebook and Instagram, as well as on my website, truthunedited.com. As always, I really would like to thank all those who support this ministry. 
You know who you are. Your contributions have been an extreme blessing to this ministry, and I'm very thankful for you. Thank you for being a blessing. Okay, thanks again for watching, everyone. I love you all.